well you better get ready Bow to the masters Break it down! Now we get into week one. All our picks are down below here in this red, except of course our game of the week, which we'll get to uh, in just a couple of days. Uh, so just hold your horses on that one if you can. But uh, we'll go through the rest of the picks uh, quickly. Do want to highlight a couple things. Uh, we put all our info down below so you can read it for yourself. But just to highlight a few things. First game of the season on Wednesday night, uh, Seymour uh, and O'Brien Tech, the new team on the block heading down to, uh, to the Ryan Complex on a derby to square off. And the storyline here, new starts for both teams. Seymour trying to get back from an 0-10 uh, last year, yep. and now O'Brien coming out of the co-op at Derby. Yeah, um, I mean, the, the fact is, uh, not too many people down here know too much about O'Brien. Obviously, a first-year program, but we do know they have a couple guys from uh, starters uh, from, uh, from the Derby program. I just don't think they're going to be able to overcome uh, Grabowski coming back with the, uh, with the Cats. Yeah, Seymour uh, poised definitely to get off its 0-10 Schneid from last year, so uh, they like to do it right in game one. We both have Seymour winning that one. A Thursday night, a couple of really good games. You get two out-of-league games and two in-league games. Uh, Sacred Heart and Woodland is the first one. I'll be there covering that one for the paper. Uh, can't be in two places at once, so I've got to be there. Uh, but that one, you've got two new teams with two quarterbacks that are coming in. That, uh, Rohan Eiffel from Sacred Heart and Jack DiBiase from Woodland carry those two teams' offense this year. And now you've got new guys. Javon Martin for Sacred Heart, Tanner Kingsley from Woodland. Here's their first chance of the year. Yeah, we've heard a bunch of things about Javon Martin. I mean, uh, I personally haven't been able to see him this offseason, but uh, the things I've been hearing is that he's, he's Rogan Eiffel esque. Um, obviously, losing Coggins is a big hit for that team. One of the, one of the state's top players. Um, all state and all American kid. I mean, you know, that's obviously going to you know, impact him. But like, I, like Kyle mentioned before, he mentioned DJ Ellis. I mean, he's, he's probably a. Uh, Hoggins twin, I would yeah. say, you know. I definitely have Woodland uh, in that game at home. Their new quarterback, I don't expect them to throw the ball much. I just expect them to pound the, uh, pound the rock. And I think Zach Evine is going to have an awesome game. Yeah, we saw last year, you got to figure uh, revenge is on Woodland's mind after Sacred Heart cost the Hawks the, the division title uh, back in week nine. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a tough play there. So uh, I have Woodland winning also. Not sure how much they'll throw. I think they will throw some. I saw uh, Tanner Kingsley in a scrimmage, and uh, he throws a pretty good ball. But mm -hmm. I think running the ball will be big. If they can develop someone other than Zach and Eni, I think that'll be big for them. But the defense and lines are pretty much all back. Secondary might be a weak spot, so if Martin can throw the ball, uh, there might be a place for the Hearts to capitalize. Uh, we got two out of league games. Water, uh, Watertown down at Montville. Just quickly to go over that one. Uh, I've got Montville winning that one. They lost Tar uh, Charlie Gerard Floyd, but they're going to be pretty solid. Watertown's got to replace uh, Matt Quatrano. Yeah, I saw I saw, I saw saw Montville last year, although I and Sonia pounded them. Um, they definitely had some speed and size. So um, they have a couple guys returning up there. And Watertown definitely lost one of the top athletes in the league in uh, Matt Quatrano, who was Mr. Everything for them. Um, I just don't see them winning this game. No, I think it's going to be tough. I've got Montville there, too. Uh, Watertown's going to have the size. If they can D it up, they might be able to stay in that one. I've got Montville there. The other out-of-league game, Lyman Hall coming to Municipal Stadium to, to play Wilby. We've heard a lot about Wilby. Uh, how much are they going to improve under Pat Russo? Uh, more defensive mentality, more physical. Uh, we'll see what happens there. I actually have Wilby winning this game. I've heard a lot of very good things. It's, both of us have. Uh, how many good athletes they have, and if they have them all in the right uh, state of mind right now, Lyman Hall might not be what they were last year either. Yeah, I've heard I've heard uh, things similar to what Kyle just said uh, regarding Lyman Hall. I heard uh, they've had a couple good seasons, decent seasons, but I heard they're, they're on the decline. Uh, I personally haven't seen them myself, so I can't say that's a fact. But um, with the talks, with what I've heard of uh, about Wilby and a couple of the scores I've seen in the preseason, albeit, it's, albeit that there are preseason games, I still think that I still think those types of scores beating Holy Cross 27 to uh, or 24 to 7. Yeah. I, I, I think that means a little something. So I'll give Wilby the edge here. Right, so we both got Wilby in that game. The Battle of the Eagles, Kennedy up to Wilkett. Wilkett probably suffered the most losses of any team in the league. They only have three uh, starters back. We'll see what Wilkett can bring back to the table. They're not going to be as big as they were last year, at least it appears, but maybe more speedy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like Kyle said, uh, Kyle was at the game at the. Uh, the other day, and uh, see losing uh, the guys on the line like Moreau and Murphy um, obviously hurt him. But Von Villian was out, and I think I think they tied. Yeah, they tied. yeah, it, it was either two to two or two to one. It was a close game either way. Uh, a couple big plays on both sides. But to be honest, I, I was expecting Wilkett to lose by uh, by a couple scores. Yeah. So I mean that that was kind of surprising. So I have Wilkett there too. 
All right, so we, uh, we both have Wolcott in that game. St. Paul and Derby. This one might be the most intriguing game of the week uh, just because of how many points there might be here. St. Paul, you've got sophomore quarterback Logan Marchie. Uh, we've heard so many good things about him. He played very well in the last five games of his freshman season. And, of course, Derby, we've talked so much about Ray Krieger. These teams don't exactly play a heck of a lot of defense, at least last year. Could we see a game in the 40s here, Rem? Yeah, we might see a game in the 40s, possibly 50s, and uh, bring some snacks because you might be there for four <laughs> hours. Um, Derby's going to throw the ball. I mean, the only way I see Derby running the ball a lot is if uh, if, if they're obviously successful and uh, just want to run the clock out. You know, if Derby's up by a couple scores, I just expect them to try to establish a running game with their, with their running back, Tyree Small. Tyree Small, sorry. And um, I don't expect Krieger's on to take that much of a beating. Um, having to do a lot of work, but um, St. Paul's definitely going to air it out. The reports I've heard this off season from uh, from up in Bristol is uh, St. Paul's been throwing the ball pretty much 90% of the time, so uh, it could be a long game. Yeah, it could be, so if you're uh, headed down for that one, uh, the Red Raider trying to get their first win against St. Paul. The Falcons have always been sort of sneaking up on them at the beginning of the season. You expect Derby to be a little bit more ready this time, so I think we both have yep. Derby there, but that might be the upset pit of the week if you want to go with St. Paul. Uh, two more uh, before we get to our game of the week. Uh, Naugatuck at East Long, Mon East Long Meadow, Massachusetts, heading out of state. The only team in the league that's heading out of state. Uh, Coach Plasky has some connections. He went to school up in Springfield, so that's how we hooked up this one. And uh, the defending NBL champs, they lost a lot. They lost a lot of skilled position players. Uh, one of their best uh, linemen, Nico Perry, is injured at least for a few weeks. But they did look a little bit better on offense, and I was expecting Zach Mercer is going to be the quarterback, and he throws a pretty nice ball. He's mobile. And, of course, you've got Jake Urison back there. Uh, so two big offensive weapons. The defense should be flying around. Uh, that, is that going to be enough to beat an out-of-state team? Yeah, I don't know. Um, the reports I've heard of East Long Meadow uh, this, during the offseason, talking to a couple local coaches about this team, is uh, that they were a powerhouse in that area of the state. So I don't know too much about them this year, but um, I just hope Nogatuck goes up there and represents the NBL well. Um, unfortunately, I, I don't think that uh, with the new quarterback and losing Berger and uh, Broderick and you know the, and Conklin, big big playmakers, um, and Echeverry on the line, I don't I don't think they'll be able to uh, to withstand East Long Meadows uh, uh, attack. Yeah, they are uh, obviously after a long ride. Too, yeah, so yeah, that could be too. You're gonna have to watch out for that. Uh, we have for the East Long Meadow likes to run the ball and love to see if Nogatek can stop it. We both have East Long Meadow there. A lot of agreement here. Uh, in week one, but uh, our final game, uh, non-game of the week game, Crosby at Holy Cross, the Crusaders, Rem's pretty high on them, uh, thinking they can contend for the Copper, and you got to get off to it right out of the gate. Uh, we'll see what a balanced offense the Crusaders can bring, whether Zach Brown can step in and be an accurate passer, and, and how they balance that with David Georgie and the other athletes. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Holy Cross comes into this game the more talented and experienced team. I just don't know. I mean, Zach Brown returns, um, Holy Cross typically plays, uh, well, the, the, the problem with Holy Cross uh, some years, since I've been in the Valley, is they lose to uh, they lose to lower uh, echelon teams, the lower echelon teams, and then they, they give other uh, other teams like Naugatuck and Woodman a, a really hard uh, a really hard game, a really hard unexpected game. So I don't know what to think in this game. I'm going to go with Holy Cross um, just, just because I know who they have coming back, and I think they have some experience there with the Georgia playing for two or three years already and Zach Brown back for him. So I'm going to go with Holy Cross there. Yeah, I've got the Crusaders too. Uh, we'll have to see what Crosby can bring. They have some turnover on offense and defense, and new players coming in, a new coach coming in. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if it was a competitive game. It's Holy Cross can't come in and post, uh, you know, like they think they've won it already. I saw them the other night against Hill House. You know, okay, the offense was a little bit of disarray, but it looks like they were some trying some other things that Georgia wasn't on the field a lot. But I do have Holy Cross uh, in that one to get off to a good start. So that is it for our non-game of the week games, and we're going to make you come back uh, for our game of the week. We've got another thread coming up on Tuesday in advance of Thursday's game, but we do want you to make your picks uh, of all these games with us. Put them down below in the comments. We'll put them in the predictions tracker. We want you to join uh, me and Rem this year. We'll see who wins the predictions battle. The defending champ is right here, uh, so we'll see uh, how that stuff goes. So game of the week had a thread coming up on Tuesday. Uh, make sure you stick around. Plenty of good discussion. We want to thank you guys very much uh, for always coming back to the blog. Really appreciate it. So for Rem, I'm Kyle. We'll see you guys on Tuesday. Follow us on Twitter, NBO Football.